Emma, you there? Hello, Jason. Hey, it's going to be a busy night, so do yourself a favor and free up some of your RAM. You got it. Is that the iPhone 15? Yeah, I've been using it over the past six months, wanting to put together a long-term review of it, so do me a favor, run a full diagnostics and give me a summary of the findings, yeah? Roger that. Design. The iPhone 15 has a slightly rounded frame for better ergonomics. This makes the phone more comfortable to hold without compromising the signature industrial look. And the frosted glass on the back has done a remarkable job of mitigating fingerprints compared to its glossy counterpart. Apple silicone detected, A16 Bionic engaged. Though not Apple's newest mobile processor, the iPhone 15's processing strength is exemplary and an upgrade from last year. The Super Retina XDR OLED panel looks outstanding, but I'm encountering a fatal flaw. It still has an outdated 60Hz refresh rate. The addition of Dynamic Island makes the experience feel a lot more novel despite being quite similar to last year's model. The rear main camera has seen a significant upgrade with the new larger 48 megapixel sensor and with new features like sensor shift for better low light image quality. And 4K video quality continues to outpace the competition. At $799 the iPhone 15 is remarkable value and probably one of the best options to choose from in 2024. Hey, it's Jason. I've been using the iPhone 15 now for about six months, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This is the best non-pro iPhone Apple has ever made. Now, that statement could seem like an exaggeration, especially because at first glance, this phone looks eerily similar to the last three generations of iPhone that came before it, but six months later, I could tell you right now that there are differences here that makes the iPhone 15 special. And let's start with the physical look and feel while we're on the topic. Yes, there are a lot of things that are quite familiar with the iPhone 15 from a form factor standpoint, and that's because it's still using the main design blueprint it's used since the iPhone 12. But there are some subtle changes Apple made that have had a bigger impact than I thought they would. Starting off with the very slight rounding off of the frame, Apple used to completely square it off with the front and back of the phone, and even though it looked cool, because it was cut basically at a 90 degree angle with the glass, it wasn't the most comfortable thing to hold, especially after extended periods of time. Rounding off the edge makes the iPhone feel noticeably more natural to hold, especially around your fingers, and what's great is that there's no compromise to the look that has become so popular, the frame is still flat along the sides, enough to where you can still balance the iPhone 15 on its frame without it tipping over. Now the other subtle but more noticeable design changes with the frosted back, this is the first time a non-pro iPhone has not had the super glossy reflective glass, and six months later, this is such a welcome change. From a practicality standpoint, the frosted finish significantly reduces the amount of noticeable fingerprints and smudges that plague the older models, so it looks and feels a lot cleaner than before. Also, Apple did a really good job with the colors this go around. I was skeptical about going with the pink this year, but man, the colorway has really grown on me, mainly because the finishing on the glass is so well executed and pairs wonderfully with the color match frame. Again, it's subtle, but the whole package comes together to make it look a lot more premium than its predecessors. I think a big part of this is the matte texture on both the glass and the frame. It makes the iPhone 15 look a lot stealthier and mature, and a lot more similar in design with its pro brothers than ever before. And the other change that also contributes to that last point is with the front of the iPhone 15, the display is now finally notch-free and has the same pill-shaped cutout that Apple introduced with the iPhone 14 Pros, which also means that it's privy to all the fun that is Dynamic Island. Now, this is much more of a software feature than it is a design element, but six months later, I feel as though the addition of Dynamic Island is a major differentiator between the iPhone 15 and all the other non-pro iPhones. It's something that you experience and interact with all the time, and I know Dynamic Island has a lot of haters, but it's a really cool feature that I'm glad has come to the cheaper iPhones. Now, before we talk about how the iPhone 15 has been performing over the past six months, I want to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, Anchor. Anchor is like the goat of battery technology, and this is their new Anchor Mago Power Bank. It's a Qi 2 certified 15 watt ultra fast portable charger, and it's quite possibly the best companion for the iPhone 15. Now, there are many reasons behind that statement. Number one, the Anchor Mago is fully compatible with Apple MagSafe, so it securely snaps onto the back of your phone, and man, this connection is solid. It feels like it's glued onto the phone when connected. This is great because the last thing that you want is your phone getting easily disconnected without you knowing it, only to find out that your device is basically dead when you need it the most, you will not have that issue here. And because the Mago Power Bank can charge at 15 watts, it's just as fast as the original MagSafe charger and two times faster than other normal 7.5 watt power banks. This will bring your iPhone 15 from 0 to 25% battery in a blazing fast 18 minutes, and because it's wireless, you can still freely carry around and use your phone while juicing up. This is particularly useful if you're on the move often, it's a real anxiety-inducing moment when you need to be somewhere, but you have to like find an outlet to wire in your 
phone before it dies, so having this in your bag or pocket is super convenient. It also has a USB-C port that puts out and takes in 20 watts of power for super fast charging and recharging the power bank itself. And what's cool is that you can charge the Maggo power bank and still wirelessly charge your device at the same time to ensure that you don't have any interruptions to what you're doing while getting the juice that you need. Plus, the Anchor Maggo power bank is pretty compact for a 6600 milliamp hour battery pack, so it's super easy and comfortable to carry around with you. Not only that, the power bank also acts as an adjustable stand for your phone that takes the functionality of this thing to another level. You can adjust the angle anywhere from 30 to 65 degrees to find your optimal viewing position in both landscape and portrait mode, and I can't tell you how useful this small feature is. It is so much more comfortable taking a FaceTime call or watching videos with your phone propped up, and I love that you have some flexibility in terms of finding the angle that works best for you. This is an absolute must-have when you're on a plane. There's something wonderful about having your phone in a perfect viewing position without you having to do anything, all while having it charge your battery at the same time. It's seriously the best of two worlds. Hence why this is hands down my favorite portable battery when I'm traveling, especially for the iPhone 15. If you guys are interested in learning more about the Anchor Maggo wireless power bank, click on the link in the description below. Don't put yourself at risk of having your phone die on you when you need it the most. Check out Anchor today. Okay, next, let's talk about performance with the iPhone 15 six months later. One of the things that really sets this variant apart from last year's iPhone 14 is that it actually got an upgrade to the processor. It's not Apple's newest, but the 15 is equipped with Apple's A16 Bionic, a beast of a chip that allows this particular phone to step up in certain key areas. Now, we talked about Dynamic Island. No no doubt the extra horsepower from the A16 Bionic helps with those buttery smooth animations and multitasking. Gaming on the iPhone 15 is a walk in the park. There's no lag or jitters even for graphic intensive options. The Super Retina XDR OLED panel is solid and makes consuming content an absolute joy. And Apple Silicone is known for their class leading efficiency, something that you see exemplified in the phone's battery life. Six months later, I've been averaging around seven hours of screen on time, which is great for a phone this size. I've had no issues getting through a full day of even heavy use so long as I start the day on a full charge. Now, one of the reasons why the battery performance is as good as it is, however, is due to the biggest limitation with this phone, and that's the lack of a high refresh rate display. And it's been really weird when I'm actually using the iPhone 15, the fact that it's using a 60 hertz panel doesn't really bother me that much, mainly because iOS at that refresh rate is still really smooth compared to the competition. But when I go back to something like my iPhone 15 Pro that has ProMotion, it's a much nicer user experience. Now, I know a lot of people won't even give the non-Pro iPhones a chance because of this issue, and even though I do think it's a bit overblown, it is kind of annoying that a phone this expensive in 2024 is using such dated technology. Now, another limitation with the iPhone 15 in terms of not taking advantage of new technology is the USB Type-C integration. Don't get me wrong, I love that Apple finally made the switch over to sunset the use of lightning cables, but Apple didn't make this port as functional as it could be. So there's no high-speed data transfer, no unique capability like DeX on the Galaxy, not even the ability to charge the battery at a faster rate. Seems like some missed opportunities there, and I'm hoping that the iPhone 16 does a better job leveraging this powerful I.O. But the area in which the iPhone 15 performs the strongest and really takes advantage of the new processors with its cameras, Apple went all out here. We get the new 48 megapixel main sensor that is a massive upgrade from last year as it comes with Apple's sensor shift technology and the ability to give you a lossless two times cropped zoom. You also get a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel front facing selfie camera and the performance that you get with the still image quality here is fantastic. The photos are detailed and have rich accurate colors and with the larger sensor and better stabilization, you do get a noticeable step up in low light quality. Six months later, I also love this lossless two times zoom. It kind of feels like you have a triple camera setup and it really adds to the utility of the iPhone 15. And these are some of the best photos that you can get out of any phone right now without question. And of course, when it comes to video, Apple continues to crush it here and the iPhone 15 delivers, doing even better now with stabilization and low light than previous years. Yes, you don't get the ability to shoot in raw like the 15 Pro, but I think most people will be just fine with this level of quality because it's outstanding, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And at the end of the day, I think the best thing about the iPhone 15 six months later with all the wonderful things that I've grown to love about it is honestly its price. At $799 US, I wouldn't go so far as to call the phone anything near cheap, but that's a very fair price for all you're getting with this device. There is no question that the iPhone 15 is a bona fide flagship phone and is ultra capable and a joy to use. And I think more love should be thrown its way because I feel as though it's mad underrated. Now I get it, there are some things about 
about it that just completely missed the mark like the absence of a high refresh rate display which again some people just can't look past so let me know what you guys think are you a fan of the iphone 15 like i am or do you think it's nothing special curious to get your thoughts let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below and in case the iphone 15 pro is more your speed check out these reviews here they're going to help you be as informed as possible